Hello and welcome back to The Wargamer and another Necromunda painting tutorial. In this video I'll be showing you how you can paint the Escher gang members in a grey and blue colour scheme and I'll be using the Citadel range of paints to do so. Now before we can begin painting our miniature we first of all need to primer it and this is so that the later layers of paint will adhere to the surface of the miniature properly. Now for this I've used a grey primer as grey allows us to paint some of the lighter colours quite easily without being too light that it makes painting some of the darker colours more difficult. Now the first areas that I'll be painting will be the tan coloured cloth on the miniature. Now we want to base coat these areas using a shabti bone. Now whenever you apply a base coat it is highly recommended that you apply at least two thin down coats. So create a mixture of at least one part paint to one part water, apply this over the areas you wish to paint, allow it to dry thoroughly and then apply a second layer over the top. By doing this we get a really nice and even coverage without obscuring the details by applying the paint too thickly. With our base coat completed we can now start applying a wash of seraphim sepia to the areas that we painted with a shabti bone. Now this wash will flow into those recesses and help to bring out the detail by applying some darker shading in those crevices and recesses. Now when applying this wash I'd recommend creating a mixture of two parts wash to one part water as applying it straight out of the pot can be a little bit overpowering. If once this first layer has dried you do feel it's not quite dark enough you can always apply a second layer over the top. The final step in painting these tan coloured cloth areas is to apply an edge highlight of white scar. Now to edge highlight, take a small brush and just a small amount of paint on the tip of your brush and lightly drag it along the hard edges of these areas. This technique will really serve to bring out the details in these area by creating a strong contrast between the highlights and also the recesses that we applied with the wash. Whenever you apply a highlight, I would highly recommend creating a mixture of two parts paint to one part water. This slightly diluted mixture of paint will go on a lot easier and make your highlighting much easier and quicker. When painting your miniatures, it's generally advised that you paint from the inside out. So following that logic, we'll next be tackling the skin areas. Now for these areas, you want to start off with a base coat of Cadian Flesh Tone. With our base coat of Cadian Flesh Tone completed, we now want to apply a layer of Kislev Flesh. Now I'm painting with the Kislev Flesh, we want to paint over the entirety of the skin, but we want to leave the Cadian Flesh Tone visible in those recesses. Much like our base coat, it's recommended that you create your mixture of one part paint to one part water to help make those transitions a lot smoother. After the Kislev Flesh layer, the next step is to apply a wash of Reichland Flesh Shade. Now this wash will have a dual effect. It will not only darken down those recesses and help to enhance the shading, but also help to smooth out the transition between the lighter Kislev Flesh and the darker Cadian Flesh Tone. The final step in painting the skin areas of our miniature is to apply an edge highlight of Flayed One Flesh. Now we want to concentrate this on some of the more defined muscles and also some of the facial features such as the nose, the brow, the lips and also the cheekbones as well. The next area of this miniature that I'll be painting will be all the dark grey areas. This includes things like the armour and also the leather areas on the boots as well. And we want to base coat all these areas using Eschen Grey. Following the base coat, the next step in painting those dark grey areas is to apply a wash of Nuln Oil. This will not only flow into those recesses, enhancing the detail, but also darken down the colour of the Eschen Grey slightly as well. The final step in painting our dark grey areas on this miniature is to apply an edge highlight of Dawnstone. The next area that I'll be painting will be any dark blue cloth that we have on the miniature. In this case, it's going to be the cloth that's around the waist. And we want to base coat these areas with Stegadon Scale Green. With our base coat of Stegadon Scale Green completed, we can now apply a wash of Coelia Green Shade. Now this is perfect wash for over Stegadon Scale Green because it has a slightly greenish blue hue to it. So it won't affect the colouring but still give us that shading in the recesses. The final step in painting the blue cloth is to apply an edge highlight of Sotek Green. The next area of our Escher gang member that we want to paint are any brown leather areas or wooden areas on the miniature. And we want to paint all these areas with a base coat of Dryad Bark. With the base coat completed we now want to apply a wash of Agrax Urshade over all of the areas that we've painted with Dryad Bark. The final step in painting the brown leather and wooden areas of our miniature is to apply an edge highlight of Gawthor Brown. If you wish to apply some additional detailing to your miniature, you could apply some thin horizontal lines to the wooden areas of your miniature. Focusing on the flat areas will give you the effect of a wood grain. The next step is to paint all the black areas of the miniature. For this, I'll be using a bad and black. Now these areas include the stock of the weapon, but also some of the additional equipment that the Escher gang member is carrying as well. 
Once our black base coats have been completed, we can now start painting the electric blue colouring that we have on the hair and also some of the equipment as well. And for this, we want to apply a base coat of Temple Guard Blue. When painting the glowing blue areas of the equipment, if you overspill around the areas, then don't worry too much as this will just add to the glowing effect. With our base coats applied, we now want to apply a wash of Drakenhof Nightshade to the areas that we painted with Temple Guard Blue. Now Drakenhof Nightshade is quite dark and will be a little bit too overpowering if applied straight out of the pot onto the light Temple Guard Blue areas. So I would highly recommend creating a mixture of one part wash to one part water before applying it on the miniature. The final step in painting the blue areas of this miniature is to apply an edge highlight of Baharoth Blue. With the blue areas completed, the next step is to start painting the metallic areas using Lead Belcher. The areas that we want to base coat include the dagger, the barrel of the rifle, the magazine and also the trigger guards of the rifle, the knee pads and also some of the additional equipment as well. With our base coat of Lead Belcher completed, we now want to apply a wash of Agrax Earthshade to these areas. This wash will not only help to bring out those details, but also give these areas an unkempt feel, which is perfect for these underhive warriors. The final step in painting our Escher gang member is to apply an edge highlight of Stormhost Silver to all of the metallic areas. Now in addition to applying a regular edge highlight to the actual metallic areas, I'll also be applying some paint chips to the areas that we painted with a bad and black. Now when painting these paint chips, you want to approach them in a similar way as a regular highlight, but instead of being a nice consistent line, you want to apply some jagged lines and dots along the edges. This will help to create the effect that these weapons haven't been particularly well looked after or have been scavenged from older stockpiles. And so that concludes this tutorial on how to paint your Necromunda Escher gang members in a grey and blue colour scheme. And you can find a full list of the paints that I've used in this tutorial in the description below, along with links to both my Facebook page and also my Facebook group, The Wargamers, as well. If you enjoyed this video, please do let me know in the comments below, along with your suggestions for other Necromunda colour schemes you would like to see me tackle. And finally, I just want to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters. It's you guys who make these videos possible. And if you're interested in supporting me as well, you can do so by checking out my Patreon page, which you can find a link to in the description below. From there, you can donate to me from as little as a dollar a month, which just really helps me in producing future content. And with that, all that's left to say is thanks for watching and goodbye.